Are you struggling to keep the spark alive in your relationship? Or maybe you just want to know the secret to what it takes to keeping a long lasting relationship. Well, you're in the right place. I've been in a relationship with my girlfriend for two years. I've known her for an additional one year. And I'm here to share with you the top five tips that will make a successful lesbian relationship work for you based off my experience. Now you definitely don't wanna miss out on tip number six. Let's dive in. Tip number one is Communication is key. Now, a lot of people throw around the word communication this, communication that. Like, what does that really mean? Well, it encompasses a lot of things, right? First is listening. So there will be times where my girlfriend will complain about her job. And there will be times where people just don't care. It's like, it's not their issue. It's not their problem for them to care or listen to. And really, people just want to be heard. People just want to know that they're cared for and that's why you're in this relationship. Showing empathy and sh giving her, you know, your full attention. Use I statements, all right, to express your feelings instead of placing blame. Like, I feel hurt when you do X, Y, Z. Instead of, you always leave the dishes on the counter. Now, this fosters a more constructive dialogue. People want to feel heard, they want to feel cared for, and they want to be feeling like nagged and being blamed for all the time. Tip number two, understanding each other's love language. Now, what does that mean? So I'm taking this page, well really pages, from this book written by Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages. And he goes over how people feel loved in different ways, how it kind of just is like the highest affinity to them filling their love tank. And those five include words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of services. Now, if you're not sure what your love language is, and maybe your partner's love language, I encourage you to take their free quiz on their website to help diagnose what your love language is. Feel free to pause this video and come back to it. Now that you've taken the quiz, if your partner or this person their love language that ranks the highest is words of affirmation. Try sending an unexpected text message that encourages and send it often. Physical touch, give them regular hugs, kisses, hold hands. Was it receiving gifts? Now you don't need to go all out and buy them like a Rolex or a Lambo. I'm sure they would like that though. But giving them thoughtful gifts. Now that could be like little things here and there. One of the things that I love is I am a huge fan of Cheetos, the crunchy ones, not the puff ones, the crunchy ones. And say my girlfriend has to go make a run to Walmart and it was not on the shopping list, but she'll come home with a bag of Cheetos. And I love that. She's like, it shows that she's thinking of it, thinking about me. Quality time. Now, if this is your love language, quality time doesn't always have to be big and grand, like you going out on vacation for like a week. Like, of course that would be great. But like having uninterrupted, undivided attention with quality time is really what matters here. So it can be just small moments. I love just going shopping with my girlfriend, doing chores together. It's just, we're there together on a mission. And the last one is acts of service. Now this can be making breakfast for your loved one while they're still in bed. I personally really love that my girlfriend is helping me do laundry or I'll, yeah, just cook her dinner. She loves sushi, so I'll make sushi at home. Things like that. Tip number three is respecting each other's spaces in layman terms. You're having your individuality and having you to that time and space to pursue your own hobbies separate from your girlfriend. Now you can do this by encouraging space and time away from each other, whether that be hobbies or going to hang out with your friends away from each other and it's okay you, you guys can spend time away from each other i've heard where couples one of them will go tra solo traveling so that's also an option this can prevent the relationship from feeling suffocating and also keeps the relationship fresh number four i really like is supporting each other's goals it is so great when your partner is like your biggest cheerleader. I've heard a story where one of my friends, she was in a relationship with this girl, they are now not together, an ex, but every time that she would have a win in whatever she's doing, it almost felt like it was an attack on her partner. So she had always had to like demote or dumb it down or like be unenthusiastic for a win. 
or what she was pursuing her doctor her phd degree so i mean that's a huge achievement but to come home and be like oh yeah i didn't it was no big deal that sucks you want this person who is going to be your cheerleader who's going to root for you who's going to be in tune with your goals and i'm so grateful for my girlfriend and that we really motivate each other. I'm hoping the best for her. I want the best for her. And she is returning that energy back to me. I want to make a point that while wins are great, the setbacks are also going to hurt as well. And you want to be supportive with your partner, even when there are setbacks. Your wins are her wins and your, your failures or your you know setbacks are also going to be hers as well. So it's a team effort. Having the sort of mentality of a togetherness is going to boost, you know, everybody's confidence. It's going to show that everybody's invested in everybody's happiness and also personal growth. And what's more great than that? Number five is resolving conflicts healthily. And there is going to be definitely times where there's going to be disagreements. When things just don't go right, somebody's going to be pissed. I've heard there's people who, I mean, I don't do this, but slamming doors, throwing things, totally unnecessary, incredibly escalated behavior. My advice is to reframe the conversation to make it more instead of like a you versus me situation, but reframe it to being, hey, this is an our situation, it's an us togetherness situation. Let's try and figure out a solution together. And sometimes you just need to take a break. Maybe you're just not in the right headspace. Like you're really pissed. She's really pissed. Take a break, come back, have a Kit Kat and then come back. You really want to focus on the issue at hand instead of trying to attack everybody or attack each other. Cause like I said, it may feel good at the moment, but it's really not getting you anywhere. It's not productive. And my final advice on this is that if this is not getting resolved and it's a continuous issue, seek help. Maybe you want to speak with a couple's counselor and they can be a mediator or even get a third, like a friend who can help mediate this but a couple's counselor can also help in this situation. Finally, number six, this is the final tip that I wanna give you guys and I love this one. It keeps things fun. It is keep dating. I'm saying this because my parents are old, like kind of couple that just work every day and it's like the same thing day in, day out. Keep dating keeps things interesting. It gives you something to look forward to. Like me and my girlfriend try to make things interesting. Like we're planning to go to an event that's free in our city on a, on a date. Make it an event, put it on the calendar, make it something that you're excited and looking forward to spend time together. And I love that quality time, right? Bring that back into the other tips that we've mentioned before. And it, it doesn't have to be big. I, one of the things that we like to do is like trying out new restaurants. And I love like sharing food together with her, critiquing it. Even if it's horrible, we'll just like crap talk it, just slam dunk it, just talk garbage about it. But it's an experience that we had together. Not only just doing stuff together, but also asking some really great questions. Having conversations with your girlfriend with some really intriguing questions can really help discover things. Even though you've been with each other for X amount of time, you're still learning about each other and it reignites that flame, gives you those butterflies that you had originally when you first met her. And those are great. Well, that's it for today's video with my top six tips for you to have a successful lesbian relationship. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below with a heart emoji, letting me know that you've watched it to the very end. Now that you know what's in the secret sauce to a long last relationship, I'm sure you don't wanna mess it up with the girl that you want that long last relationship with. You should check out this video next, where I talk about what you should send in your first text message to that girl of your dreams. If you haven't already, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on another video where I talk about my LGBT dating advice and relationship advice. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.